Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, a deadly shooting turned into a manhunt. I grabbed my gun. Some guy comes to my bedroom window and he knocks, I thought he'd knock both windows up. What neighbors say happened moments after a shooting in Franklin County. And a campaign aimed at preventing drinking and driving over the holidays. You know, driving is an adult responsibility. If you want that responsibility, you need to act like it. Why our region sees more crashes than others. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Brittany McGraw. And I'm McKinley's brother. John Carlin is off tonight. A murder turned manhunt into with a Boone's Mill man behind bars. This man right here, 30-year-old Dominic Novia, is charged with the murder of 70-year-old Mary Ann Cook. She was found shot to death in her home. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett has been talking with people in the area today about the dramatic end to this tragedy. Whitey Taylor says he woke up Wednesday night to the sound of his dog Sybil barking. My dog started barking. Somebody had knocked on the door and I thought it was my wife for her. So I called her on the phone. She said, I'm not out, out down there. He quickly knew something was wrong and thought someone was trying to break into his home right behind the Trump store in Boone's Mill. I grabbed my gun. Some guy comes to my bedroom window and he knocks. I thought he'd knock both windows out, but he just knocked one pane of the glass out. You can see the shattered glass here. Taylor says it wasn't until Thursday morning that he learned what had happened. And I found out he was just looking for a place to hide. He'd already killed his grandmother. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says 30-year-old Dominic Novia is charged with second-degree murder. His alleged victim, 70-year-old Mary Ann Cook, who was shot and killed in her home along Bethlehem Road. Deputies say Novia then took off towards this nearby convenience store. Employees who didn't want to talk on camera tell me Cook was Novia's grandmother and that she raised him. They say she was a sweet woman and they never expected Novia to do anything like this. Really regret this happened to his family member. Anybody would get in that state of mind to do something like that is terrible. Court records show Novia has a long criminal background. Charges include assault and battery, assault on a law enforcement officer and drunk driving. Taylor says what happened is a tragedy. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's, it's just unimaginable. You see it happening all the time in other areas, but it, you don't expect it in your area. Novia is being held at the Franklin County Jail without bond. In Franklin County, Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Turning now to your forecast, chilly again, but on a day and a time when you would expect <laughs> us to have colder temperatures, we're actually heading towards some record-setting warmth. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Just in time for Christmas, the complete opposite of last year. Our temperatures at this moment are mostly in the 40s across the region. Mid-40s here in Roanoke as we get a live look from our downtown sky cam. We are bringing in a little bit more cloud cover for this evening that has mostly been some higher cirrus clouds. That's not going to affect how cool we get for tonight, but you factor in those winds, even though they have shifted throughout the day, still causing our temperatures to feel about five degrees colder than what the actual thermometer shows. So again, mostly 40s out there, but Lewisburg now tapping into the mid 30s, upper 30s back towards Hot Springs and back towards Smith Mountain Lake. You're now at 42 degrees as we head throughout the next few hours. If you're heading out to Illuminates, a great evening to do so. Our temperatures are going to be dropping quickly. Initially, we'll see the mid 40s right about now as we head towards the time things are wrapping up there at Illuminates. We are into the mid and upper 30s again, holding on to a little bit more cloud cover, not tracking any rain though. Things are still looking good for us. Satellite and radar showing that cloud cover, so do note that we are definitely going to be seeing more of that as we head into tomorrow. We'll take a little bit closer look at your Christmas forecast coming up. McKinley. All right, Delaney, thank you. Get ready for long lines and major delays because one of the busiest travel days is certainly upon us. I want to give you a live look right now at 581. Smooth sailing there, people heading home, driving to meet their loved ones for the holidays. AAA says more than 109 million people are packing their bags to travel for the holidays. That's a 34% jump from last year. Air travel at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport is also up 65% this year. As 14,000 people roll through the airport with their luggage this week, Brad Boucher says pack some patience as well. Not all airport restaurants, uh, especially in hub cities, are open right now. And those that do can have really long lines. So if you're taking a longer flight, make sure to pack some snacks so that you have food in case you're not able to get it during your layover. Betcher suggests arriving an hour and a half early to the airport to avoid any of that congestion. 
It's the 20th year of Checkpoint Strike Force, an initiative by the DMV and law enforcement to prevent drinking and driving. Town News reporter Alyssa Ray joins us live now. And Alyssa, they have some new ads this year that they're really working to get people's attention. They do every year their efforts to curb drinking and driving, especially during the holidays. Checkpoint Strike Force's ad this year is act like it. And the message is clear. If you're old enough to drink, you're old enough to do so responsibly. Another round. It's a Checkpoint Strike Force ad you'll be seeing a lot of. I'm fine. I can drive. The Virginia DMV and law enforcement are launching an annual initiative to stop drinking and driving. It may seem goofy and, and funny and childish at some points, but it's trying to hit that point home that you know driving is an adult responsibility. If you want that responsibility, you need to act like it. The timing of these ads is no coincidence. There's an increased risk of Virginians getting in an accident caused by impaired driving during the holiday season. And between Thanksgiving of 2020 and New Year's Day of 2021, Virginia saw 14 fatalities due to alcohol-related crashes. Wednesday night in Fairfax County, a Virginia state trooper and the people he stopped barely avoided injury after an impaired driver slammed into the trooper's patrol car. No one was hurt, but the driver was charged with DUI. Closer to home, the numbers of these types of accidents are daunting. What I see here in, in the Roanoke region um, in 2020, 785 alcohol-related crashes took place in this region. That's a pretty significant number when you compare that to you know, the rest of the state. Despite less people on the road last year, the effects of drinking and driving were profound. There were 272 Virginians that uh, did not get to go shopping, did not get to celebrate with their families or, or friends uh, because they were killed due to alcohol related uh, crashes. A sobering reminder, if you're old enough to drink, act like it. If you plan on drinking and need a ride, you can look into ride sharing apps like Uber or Lyft or line up a designated driver. Another tip is to take one of those resources to your destination so you're not tempted to drive yourself home. Live in the studio, Alyssa Ray, 10 News, working for you. Virginia is seeing new record high cases of COVID-19 as the Delta and Omicron variants spread across the state. Health leaders reported nearly 6,500 new cases today, one of the highest daily case counts recorded during the entire pandemic. 283 people across Southwest and Central Virginia are being treated at local hospitals for COVID-19. Doctors expect cases of the Omicron variant to surge after the new year. Governor Ralph Northam is announcing more than $24 million in grant awards to help communities address flooding and sea level rise. 30 applications from 22 local government organizations will receive grants to build capacity, plan, and begin projects to address the effects of these weather issues. Another federal grant award is giving more money for offshore wind development in the Commonwealth. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg announced more than $240 million of improvements for American ports, including the Portsmouth Marine Terminal Offshore Wind Development Project. Coming up, how volunteers are preparing for an annual Christmas tradition at one of Roanoke's largest homeless shelters. And as hundreds prepare to head to church in the coming days, we'll show you how they are planning to keep worshipers safe and healthy this holiday season. Have a question about current events, new laws? We can help. Just ask 10. It's easy. Go to WSLS.com, click on the menu icon, and click Ask 10. Type your question. We'll get to work on your answer. Ask 10 on WSLS.com. The rescue mission of Roanoke is making sure everyone has a place to have a holiday meal this season. It's hosting its annual Christmas feast on Saturday. The event is open to anyone who needs some help putting food on the table. It brings people in the community, family members and mission staff together for food and fun. The mission will have a spread that includes turkey, ham, sides and cookies. Volunteers will be helping serve the guests. We're able to get guests from the community to come on over to the mission and eat a meal, have fellowship with those who are in the community. Uh, it's so special because, quite honestly, a lot of those that we serve may not have a place to go on Christmas Day. Food will be served from 11 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon at the rescue mission. They also have a to-go option this year, and you can pick up a meal to take home. It was another seasonal day for us, but all of that changing as we head towards Christmas. Details on your forecast coming up.
practicing COVID-19 guidelines while also practicing their faith. Houses of worship are preparing for a second straight Christmas during the pandemic. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman is working for you to learn how several denominations have different protocols this year. For those leading their congregations, Christmas 2020 was unlike any other. Last year, masks were required for everyone, and we were had some of our pews roped off. We actually took uh, reservations, asked people to sit with people that they knew. We canceled all in-person services. All our services were online or recorded. They're easing up on those restrictions this year. But Christmas 2021 still includes sanitizer near the sanctuaries and masks near the missiles. Second Presbyterian Church in Roanoke, Main Street United Methodist Church in Bedford, and Lynchburg St. Thomas More Catholic Church church are all encouraging masks and social distancing. We are sanitizing the building, the chairs and um, everything like we always do. Service schedules for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day vary by worship space. All three churches are offering services online. We're trying to have that balance for those that are ready to come back and those that are still wanting to be a part of the faith community but yet stay home and stay safe. Faith leaders we spoke with expect larger crowds compared to last year but not as many members as pre-pandemic. They understand with COVID during Christmas. We need to be safe but we also need to be hopeful and even joyful. Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Another quiet evening ahead of us as we get a live look from our sky cam overlooking Blacksburg. Things are quiet outside. Wind not as bad out there for today. Our temperatures are also not going to be as cold by tomorrow morning. We're currently at 39 degrees in both Covington along with back towards Martinsville here in Roanoke mid 40s, lower 40s throughout Smith Mountain Lake along with Danville. For tonight, we will eventually be reaching into the 30s by tomorrow morning here in Roanoke, 34 degrees, so just above that freezing mark. Whereas you head towards Covington, Hot Springs, Lexington, you are just shy below that freezing mark. So another cold night ahead of us, but not nearly as cold as we were for this morning. As we go throughout the day for Christmas Eve, a significant difference than what we have seen over the past several days. We've been very seasonal, 40s and lower 50s. By 11 a.m., we're actually already into the mid 50s. So already above the temperature, our high temperature for today, we're into the lower 60s right around 2 p.m. It is going to be much warmer and we're talking about temperatures about 10 15 degrees above average for this time of year and that's just Christmas Eve alone or of course even warmer on Christmas Day. I'll look at that here in just a moment. 57 for Floyd along with Hillsville over towards Alta Vista, Bedford, even Blacksburg reaching 60 degrees, but you'll be staying in the upper 50s throughout Covington. Now we have our high pressure system that has been situated just towards the south, so things are pretty quiet for us or bringing in a little bit more cloud cover due to our warm warm front just to our north. That's also associated with our low pressure system. So that's why we're seeing a little bit more cloud cover even this evening. Our high pressure system bringing in some warmer air from the south. That's going to help us to warm up not only into Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day as well. Now, along with that low pressure system, we're watching some rain. For the most part, this looks to be focused towards the mountains for the highlands. Most of us will be staying dry for Christmas Day, but still something to take note of. A little bit more overcast as we go into Christmas Day. Not only that, but of course we've been talking about this a lot. We are looking at probably the fifth, at least the top five warmest Christmases on record here in Roanoke. We are getting very close to that. Maybe not as close over in Blacksburg, Covington, even back towards Danville, but certainly a significant difference in what we were yes, uh, last year with our white Christmas. Now, not only that, but of course December has already been well above average for this time of year. Most of our days sing those above average temperatures, but then we look ahead to New Year's. We're looking at above average temperatures continuing, but hopefully some above average precipitation as well. Your seven day forecast keeps our temperatures in the 60s for the rest of your seven day forecast. And there you go by Thursday of next week, seeing those rain chances increasing. I'm so excited about 52 Christmas morning and 62 <laughs> the rest of the day. I love that. So 67 the rest yeah. of the day. Yeah. yeah. Big warm up, man. I love the warm weather. I'm not mad about it. Although, <laughs> I agree. It should be colder, I guess, this yeah. time of year, but it is what it is. Yeah, 50s right. aren't bad, so. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brooke, what's happening in sports? 
Well, coming up after the break, we got some college basketball and our favorite, the Big Orange High School Wrestling Tournament. All that after the break. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk. Pack gym at William Byrd this afternoon for the championship round of the Big Orange. 106 weight class, Pulaski County, Xavier Ramsey versus James Rivers. Zayden win, win with the near fall right here late in the third period. He wins it by major decision, 11 to 2. In 113, James Rivers, Braden Forbes facing off against Martinsville's Michael King. King with a takedown in the second period, putting him in position for the pin. He wins it. Here are your team scores. Lord Botetot wins the team title. El in Blacksburg in second and third. William Byrd, Salem, and James River rounding out the tournament in fourth, fifth, and sixth. The Virginia Tech women are hosting number 16, Duke, and UVA is hosting number 20, Notre Dame. All right, get your picks in. This week, Abby has Vikings over the Rams. I've got Denver beating Las Vegas, and Eric picked the Bills to beat New England. Here's our Freedom First trio. Brent Jenkins going with the Titans this week. William Dixon with the Saints over Miami. And Jeremiah Clark taking the Seahawks over the Bears. All right, here's your news and notes. Rutgers to replace Texas A&M in the Gator Bowl versus Wake Forest. I know that's been – I've been waiting to see who Wake was going to play. Ravens are down to only 13 defensive players at practice. They will play Cincinnati on Sunday. And the Rail Yard Dogs are in action tonight. They play Fayetteville at 7.05. All right, here is your cut it out. Kathleen Fitzpatrick, notice Miss Fitz at Holy Trinity High School – in, not high school, Holy Trinity hey, School. Hey, Miss Fitz. <laughs> Making the full court <laughs> shot. She told her third graders if she made the shot from across the court, they would get hot chocolate. That's it? Oh. That, what do you mean that's it? Can I mean, you... the hot chocolate is good, but I mean, I feel like if she makes that shot, not only do they get hot chocolate, they get like a party. I know. Give them each five dollars. Oh, like paid for by the school. Well, Something. she's gone pizza, viral. Pizza. So maybe somebody will buy a pizza party for okay. that. That would be nice. But yeah, she actually um, used to play basketball at Rutgers. Oh, okay. wow. So she's a baller. So I mean, she, it was still <laughs> lucky, so but you know, she's a baller. She went D1. So <laughs> she's, are yeah, we she's surprised good. she did that? Yeah. No, that was awesome. <laughs> yes. That's impressive. Yeah. For sure. Let's get a quick check of the forecast before we go. Yeah, temperatures over the next few days from today are actually going to be warming back up into the 60s where we are staying over the next several days. You see the warmest day coming in on Christmas Day, but then again on Wednesday. So we have those temperatures kind of all over the place due to a few cold fronts, but Thankfully, next week we're looking at some more rain chances, which we definitely need to see Thursday looking to be most active, but that could also mean a wet New Year's. All righty. Well, NBC Nightly News is up next. We will see you back here at 7. 